Um, I've lost faith in our political system. Uh, I think democracy is a bit of illusion in Canada, especially when our, uh, our public safety is in the hand of, of the government and uh, they're not here to talk to us tonight to hear our concerns. Um, it, it's just unfortunate. I think uh, you know the citizens of Canada now need to stand up and voice their concerns and let them know how democracy works. It works in this direction, not from not from the top down. It works from the bottom up. So, uh, um, Tim, if uh, if you uh, uh, could voice your concerns sure. on how this will affect you as a firefighter and paramedic here. Yeah, and uh, before I talk about how how it's, I think it's going to affect me as a as a paramedic, uh, and actually how it's already affecting me. Uh, I'd like to give a big shout out to Trevor here. Uh, I found out uh, that we were having this town hall meeting and uh, found out this fellow named Trevor Coates was organizing it. And I started asking around, who is this guy? Who's Trevor Coates? Why is he standing up for us? Why does he care about us? <laughs> He's an electrician. This guy has nothing to do with ambulance services. I, I had to give him a call and I found out he's just a concerned citizen. He actually cares about what's going on in this community. And you know, it actually kind of shamed me because uh, here myself and my colleagues are just kind of sitting on our hands thinking it, it's inevitable. No one cares about this stuff. Who cares in this community where their ambulance is coming from or whether they even get one uh, but Trevor cares and it looks like a few other people care so that's encouraging to me and uh, and to my colleagues so I you know and Trevor here he's invested a lot of time and his own personal money into making this happen I think that's phenomenal and I think if more citizens were like Trevor that uh, that you know we really have something to build on in this community so I'd like us to give a big round of applause to Trevor Well, my background is I'm a, uh, I'm a firefighter paramedic uh, with the city here. Um, I've been a paramedic for 16 years uh, and I've kind of bounced around uh, for the first eight years. I, I've moved around from different emergency service to different emergency service and so I've seen all sorts of different models of ambulance services. Um, you know, I got into this profession like all of my colleagues because, I, you know, I want to help people. I want to, uh, you know, find someone in their time of crisis and, and help them out. Uh, that's why we all got into this profession. It wasn't until I came to Fort McMurray Fire Department that I actually found my niche and, f and felt like I was helping people out. And the reason for that is, is the whole culture here. Uh, you know, in, in an EMS service, you're kind of treated like a lone wolf. Uh, it's you and your partner, and that's it. You're out there and, and you have performance benchmarks to make. You've got to make it out of the shoot in such and such a time. You have to make sure you make uh, so many IV starts. Uh, you got to, you know, there's all these benchmarks. And it gets to feel after a while like you're, you're not serving a patient, but you're serving a bureaucracy. And that's what it felt like to me. And when I came to Fort McMurray Fire Department, I noticed an immediate change uh, in, in my work environment. No longer was I a lone wolf fighting uh, with other lone wolves and trying to prove myself to the pack leader. Uh, you know, I was working with uh, a team and that team became a family. I mean, we consider ourselves brothers and sisters. With, and, and part of the, that culture of the fire department means that we insinuate ourselves into the, into the fabric of this community. Uh, you know, you look around you today, you're going to see about 30 or 40 firefighters in this audience and people that work for the fire department. Now these people are here uh, for a career. They're not here just passing through for a job. Uh, these are, are your hockey, your kids' hockey coaches. They're, they're people that volunteer at charity events. Uh, they're people that start uh, community organizations um, you know, and do tons of fundraising. Uh, we care about this community. We live here. We raise our kids here. And so this is why we're speaking to you today because quite frankly, um, you know, it, we're not, in, our jobs aren't in jeopardy, I don't think. Uh, we're not going anywhere, uh, and we still need the same amount of people in the fire department, regardless of whether we have the ambulance or not. So our jobs aren't in jeopardy. Uh, what's really in jeopardy is, is the service that we're going to provide to the community. Uh, and like Brad alluded to, you know, the reason that we're so effective at providing EMS is this whole team attitude we have. Uh, we train as a team for everything. Uh, we train fires, we train cardiac arrest calls. I mean, at a cardiac arrest call, to effectively 
uh, resuscitate someone, you, you need about six members, six highly trained members that have worked together as a team on scene. And we've seen successes with this. I mean, last fall, uh, you know, I had the privilege of uh, resuscitating someone uh, along with five other members. Uh, you know, at, at a downtown bar, we, you know, and, and that person walked out of the hospital the next day. Brad talked a little bit about the provincial government's uh, vision that they have. And part of this vision, I mean, if you go on their website, you're, you're immediately inundated with all this propaganda that sounds amazing. Uh, you know, they've done all these studies. They, they feel that ambulance services should be part of universal health care, whatever that means. I mean, what is that even mean? Um, I mean, here's, here are some of the things that they say right on their, on their website. Uh, you know, they, they think that it should include, that EMS should include priority consideration for patient care in all aspects of EMS design, decision making and delivery. Uh, coordination, coordinated EMS system design, decision making and delivery elements that will accommodate the, the diverse EMS needs of rural and urban Albertas. Uh, standardized approaches to medical director. Uh, quality assurance, coordinated dispatch, an EMS system capable of responding without reference to political, administrative, or other artificially imposed boundaries. I mean, every, everything they list here would seem to imply that we're not doing this already. We're doing this, and then we're doing about a whole lot more, uh, a whole lot more things that actually matter and actually save lives and actually impact the community. Uh, uh, mention is that uh, you know they want performance indicators, and their biggest performance indicator that they have on their website is response times. Now how on earth are they going to provide better response times than we're doing now? And why are they implying that we're not providing these response times? These guys are responding right now. It looks like they're going pretty quick. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and, and what makes simple response times an indicator of performance anyways? I mean, there are a hundred other things that indicate performance. To me, a life saved is an indication of good performance, you know? Uh, we're going to have a provincial medical director. Now again, this means that all the protocols, all the medical direction that we're given is going to be homogenized. It's going to be exactly the same across the board. Um, how are we going to start initiatives like the ones we're currently working on where we can give clot busters? Uh, to people in our region. Uh, what about stroke screening? What about, um, you know, uh, we, we have very aggressive pain protocols so that if you break your leg and you're out in the wilderness, you know, we can, we can knock you right out and you don't have to feel a thing. Uh, it's going to be homogenized. We're going to be, be able to give you a little bit just maybe to take the edge off uh, now. And speaking of wilderness rescue, who's going to be doing the wilderness rescue? I mean, we've got, the fire department has snowmobiles, we have ATVs, we have people trained in it. Uh, where, where are these people going to come from? And where are we going to get our paramedics from? Because folks, I can tell you that much as I like working on an ambulance, I can't go back to working as a lone wolf. I can't go be back to working for a bureaucracy. And you talk to any firefighter here, none of us are going to be leaving the fire department anytime soon. So um, where are they going to get the paramedics and EMTs from? Uh, we're, there, the province has a scarcity of paramedics right now. Uh, you know, if we're all working for the fire departments, where are they going to get them from? I, I mean, this uh, right now, you know, our guys come up with initiatives. Maybe it's training with our mutual aid partners. Maybe it's uh, you know a new protocol. Uh, maybe we run into a specific problem in this area. And uh, we can address that right now. That this guy brings it forward, he brings it to the supervisor, and, and we implement change, and it happens very quickly. Now, how is the provincial government going to implement that change when it's required? Uh, we're going to have to go through our supervisor. He's going to have to send it to the regional director. The regional director is going to have to pass it by the regional medical director. He's going to have to shunt it over to his committee of uh, provincial medical directors. Then it's going to, you know, I mean, if you look at the org charts that the Alberta Health has on their website, uh, you can see the, the red tape building, right? 